recording going on. So um, welcome everyone. And um, I'm just going to give you a little disclaimer. I am in Costa Rica where sometimes electricity goes off, sometimes internet goes off. If I disappear, I'll try to come back and then, you know, we'll go from there. But life is a little different. The standards are a little different here. But I, I came to the one of the hotels where I teach yoga and I they have a really good internet here and I reserve my space. So um, I've, I've taken this, like as many measurements as I can to make sure that it's gonna be solid and good. So um, anyway, um, thank you so much for being here. I This was kind of like an impromptu idea from me to, um, to offer something like this. Um, and I haven't offered something in English in a while, um, apart from teaching, which I kind of do regularly, but um, any courses or lectures, because I was in Finland for so long that I was speaking in Finnish and I was serving in Finnish. And, and service is now something that is the theme of, of today's um, session, what I want to talk to you about. And it's something that I've been thinking about a lot in my own life and in my own career in my own journey um and yeah maybe before i go into that i would love to hear from you who are here live um what what is it that you or how is it that you serve because i know many of you are yoga teachers or or healers or teacher teachers of some sort or coaches or mentors um but then i know that there are some of you who are also not recognizing themselves as like entrepreneurs per like per se or um don't think of themselves necessarily as service providers but just to understand service in a very broad way um service can be so many different things so i would love to hear from you um how is it that you serve if you feel like typing in the chat so i can i can know who's here uh, what is the service that you do if someone someone has the courage to reveal <laughs> what kind of service it is that you do and for anyone who's just joining welcome um, I am asking everyone what kind of service you offer or maybe what you are inspired by in life what kind of service uh, I am on the go but short answer I'm starting my own business offering womb healing emotional therapy and breath work Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, not sure if I understood correctly, but want to create space for self-study. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, what well, my kind of idea around all of this, and this was a revelation that came to me actually earlier this year, was to kind of start understanding that it really is a service that we are offering to people um it's not only about i mean of course we because we operate in a world where there is money and where we need to make money and where we might you know we have to think about what our job is but for a lot of us this is so much more than just that um we are here to really kind of make a meaningful impact a meaningful change in the world and um at least to me, it feels depleting if I have to only think of this as as some sort of business or or just as kind of um, a way of making the ends meet because it kind of loses the spirit that it has. And um, one of my revelations earlier this year was that I want to serve, but in order to serve, I need to be very well resourced myself because I noticed a tendency of wanting to give from an empty cup or not necessarily empty, but maybe half filled or whatever. And it, it was whatever it was like, it was too little 
uh, for me to really authentically give from my heart and to really feel like I, I am actually coming from this place of service and from love um, instead of kind of thinking, okay, so what am I going to get from this? Is this working? Um, so it was a complete like a mind mindset shift that needed to happen. And um, I have, um, let's, let me share with you. I have a little bit of a slideshow because I wanted to also make notes for myself. Um, I have been thinking about this a lot lately where we are now living through very interesting times and um it is actually kind of our responsibility or our duty at this time to step up with our service so that's why I called it Step Into Service, because I want to inspire all of you, all of us here to actually step up with all that we have and really begin to serve. So my name is Mikaela Soldan. I'm a yoga teacher, mentor, human design teacher, Gene Keys teacher. I've studied a lot of different modalities, um, but the kind of core of the core of the core of what I do is I am here to help to kind of elevate the level of consciousness of humanity because I believe that whatever struggles, suffering, conflicts that we currently have, they all come from this place of unhealed trauma, essentially trauma that has been passed on for generations and generations and generations. There is stuff that we need to deal with that did not begin with any one of us. Maybe, yeah, some stuff begins with us, but most of what has begun and what we're dealing with did not begin with us. But the thing is, our responsibility is to actually heal that and uncover that and transmute that and alchemize that into something else. Um, so today's journey, um, we're going to talk about why your work is needed. We're going to talk about what's your service. We're going to talk about the inner work behind spiritual services and then how to do this work, like how, how to get started or how, how to continue or what's what's required. And like I said, my intention is to inspire you to serve even bigger. And now I get to my kind of big point, because I don't want to be pessimistic, but I am going to say it kind of plain and simple. These times that we're currently living through are quite rough times. Um, this has been, um, there have been predictions from different kinds of lineages, from different kinds of peoples from a, for a long time that this particular time, beginning of the 2000s, is going to be re a really big shift. The planet goes through these 2000 year cycles and we are now at the shift of cycles again. And usually what happens during a shift of cycles is a lot of upheaval. So a lot of stuff comes up. And we all signed up to be here during this time. I believe in soul's reincarnation. I believe that on some level, we have chosen um, what it is that we want to experience in life. And when we come here to this life, I didn't expect that I was going to go this far out into the, into the moment when the soul has chosen to reincarnate. But the thing is that we go through the forgetting. So we come here on a mission. And then when we grow up and when we get socialized and conditioned, we forgot why we came here. And we're like, oh, yeah, so it's nice. Yeah, well, you know, there's really nothing much to do. I'm just going to live my life. And, you know, and then probably something you have also experienced because you're here and I have for sure experienced is this kind of remembering or this some sort of deeper connection to the to some sort of a truth that is beyond what I have been taught here on this planet so it's some sort of feeling maybe in the heart or soul or spirit um during one of the I don't know yoga classes or in meditation or in ceremony or or somewhere where we get this feeling of like, maybe this is not all there is. Maybe I didn't come here just to have a career, just to pay the bills, just to, you know, buy the house and buy the dog. And there's nothing wrong 
with those things. I love all those things, but there is probably a deeper calling or a deeper mission that you feel like you signed up for. I don't know if anyone resonates with this. Let me know in the chat if if, if you feel this way, because I, I have a feeling some of you that are here, um, that will be the case. So these are the times of upheaval. And um, I believe that two things can be true at the same time. I believe that, um, you know, this all can end well. And also in order for it to end well, we need to do something about it. So we can't just go like, it's all gonna end well. I'm just gonna sit here on, you know, let rest on my laurels, not do anything about it. Um, and then at the end, like it's all gonna be well, regardless if whether we choose to do something or not. So it's like this weird paradox where, where we find ourselves. But I think that it's still like, at least this is my personal experience that I want to know at the end of my life, I want to know that I did something meaningful, that I tried, like I gave my best and I served during this lifetime. And a lot of people are going, you know, going to face a lot of really difficult stuff. And it's not that this stuff that I'm talking about, this trauma and suffering that we are facing now hasn't been here. It has been here, but it's almost been dormant. It's been kind of underneath there because maybe humanity needed to come to a certain level of, you know, we, we had to have our industrialization. We had to have a certain level of emotional awareness before we could start dealing with the big shadows that we are currently seeing that are kind of coming up. And we will need a lot of people who have done their own personal work to a certain extent, who have the tools, who are able to assist those who are just only now kind of waking up or only now starting to wonder what the heck is going on. We need us who are a couple of steps ahead in a way saying, yeah, like this has been predicted for a long time this is something that or it, we don't even have to be believe in any sort of predictions we can just tell by looking at the world that a lot of intensity is happening and we can't continue repeating these patterns of conflict some sort of solution for a moment we forget about the thing conflict again like we need to go to the root cause in order to heal the thing kind of for once and for all. This is what I believe. And um, that's why we're here. That's what I want to inspire you about because I know there are a lot of service providers, yoga teachers, meditation teachers, coaches, you know, all of us who are like, yeah, I know these tools, but it's like, why would I offer my services or no one's interested or there's so much on the market. There are so many yoga teachers already or all these stories that come up and I get it because it's hard work. Like it's, it's really a lot of work to break through those inner obstacles and the challenges to make ourselves visible. But what I want to kind of inspire us is to remember the deeper why and the spirit um, of what it is that you're offering so that it's not only about the topical like yeah I just want to teach this person this thing but really getting deeper into what is it what is it what is the bigger outcome what is the bigger vision that I wish to see and even though not there is no single person who could you know do all of this work um, it's only a little corner of of our you know, planet that we personally, each one of us individually can serve. But when we come together, it's so much more powerful. I can't do it all by myself and you can't do it all by yourself, but we can all come together and kind of have these different corners of the planet where we help our community. And then there is a little bit of something that happens. And sometimes it's a lot that happens. And it doesn't even matter what the outcome is, as long as we know that we come from the right place, we are here to serve with what we have to offer. And the vision is there, the spirit is there, the integrity is there. And then that's kind of when we've done our part, you know? And um, what I call a big wave surfer, this is from my teacher, Richard Rudd, who uh, used to study human design and now he studies the gene keys or he's the founder of the gene keys and he has been familiar with the prediction of the of humanity going through a big shift in the year 2027 so only in 
three years, pretty much. Um, the shift is going to start then, but we already see what's, you know, how, how things are evolving, what's, what's going on. And um, he calls, he talks about big wave surfer surfers as the people who choose the souls that choose to incarnate here at this time because the waves are getting big so if you're a surfer who likes the nice easy waves maybe you incarnated decades ago when the waves were smaller but now the waves are growing but when the waves are growing there are some surfers they you know pack up their boards and they go back home but then there are people the big wave surfers who actually come out when the waves get meters and meters and meters high and this is the kind of mission like these people are on a mission they are specialized in surfing the big waves instead of specialized in surfing the small waves and i believe that us service providers or just service minded service hearted people uh, whether it is that you offer your service as a business or not um we are here we are the big wave surfers like we have come here to do something about what is going to happen, what's going on here. Um, and I don't have a lot, a lot of definite answers. I don't know how to solve all of the problems, obviously. I mean, I would probably be, um, yeah, somewhere else. But the thing that I am certain of, the thing that I know for sure in my heart is that in order to heal both individually and collectively, we need to go to the root cause of our suffering. So we really need to dig deep to the trauma that I spoke to, um, the overgenerational stuff. We really need to even heal the stuff that didn't begin with us. And there is no way we can anymore compromise our way out of con conflict. Um, we can't kind of, the, the old ways are no longer working because it seems like the stuff keeps repeating itself. The cycle keeps repeating until someone says no like stop, like this is not the right way to solve it. So what I believe is that we need to feel in order to heal. Uh, we need to really um, go deep into the experience of that in order to alleviate the suffering and, and eventually free us of the suffering overall. So the turbulent times are here and a lot of healing will be required. And I believe that we each, even though we might feel so small or kind of like our work doesn't even matter, but I believe that we are all needed. We need every single one of us to do our part in the big, big collective work that is required. And how to do that? It's not that you're supposed to be serving just like helping, helping from the empty cup or in a way that doesn't even serve you. That's the old way also from of giving from the empty cup or kind of, um, you know, sacrificing your own needs. But now what we're talking about is finding your passion, finding your gifts, finding your genius, and then taking that and making it about service to others so it's it's something that gets to be fulfilling both for you and for others this is not either or situation it doesn't we don't have to choose one or the other we get to choose both we can live our passion and, and i i know that um you know many of us we also have the deep desire to create lives that are fulfilling to us um but then also, I love the idea of being able to use that. It's not only just a personal um, kind of like a, like a selfish way of, I want to create my dream life, which that actually is wonderful too. And it's, it's I think, more selfless than we really realize. Um, but when we can use that in the service of the people or the animals or the planet or whatever we need is in need of that um it makes it even more fulfilling i believe because it gets a little hollow if it's only about us we often need to feel the connection to others as well so that the work or the the thing that we're here for it it serves a purpose and it affects other people in a positive way too and in a way i believe like I say here, it's hoarding to keep your passion, your gifts and your skills to yourself in a real time of need. And the real time of need is now. Um, and if you know how to 
guide people to breathe properly or if you know how to guide people to feel their emotions or if you know how to educate children to communicate in an effective way like all of that is needed and if we keep it to ourselves and we're like well you know I I don't have anything important to offer we're we're really we're hoarding that we're we're keeping it to ourselves and that becomes selfish so in that way I want to kind of reverse it um so we've all been touched by the work we're doing and that's why I want to bring it to people and there can be a deep desire in the heart to to kind of offer that experience for everyone because the way I have benefited from the work that I've done I'm like oh my god I want to help everyone with this and then we get to start to really get very kind of wise about how we do it in this current world where we still have a capitalist system where we still have you know all these all these things we need to pay rent or pay mortgage or whatever like it is we're inside this system um, and we get to almost like marry the visionary the energetic the spiritual to the very actual uh, reality of what it is that we exist in um, and therefore it's it's not an easy path like if it was just so easy to become a service provider everyone would just be doing it and it would be everyone you know it would be just so so um kind of right from the beginning a huge success and i believe that the fact that it isn't easy is actually a good thing because it is like i call it advanced curriculum of spiritual growth because it makes you do your work first it makes you face your own limitations your own fears your own doubts first as you build your way into serving other people so um what i usually call it as kind of like an overarching theme is resistance so whatever it is whatever is the story that we tell ourselves about you know well it's not the right time it's not I, I don't know enough I need to still do this one more training um you know whatever the story is that we tell uh, that is the resistance showing up and we get to kind of anchor ourselves into the bigger vision of what it is that we're here truly to do so that we can break through the resistance. Because if if I don't have a bigger vision, I'm gonna give up to the resistance right away. I'm gonna be like, yeah, mind, you're right. Like who would want to, you know, study with me? So I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> and then that's it, you know? But when I have the vision and I know what I'm working towards, I, I am so internally resourced and motivated that when the resistance shows up, I'm like, ah, it's resistance again. Hello, old friend. I know you already. You're coming up in a different costume. Last time you were wearing this and now you're wearing something else. But I still see you like you're just resistance. And then I can anchor myself back into the vision. I can go through whatever it is that I need to, you know, process and alchemize and transmute into something else. And that actually solidifies my foundation as a service provider, as a business owner, if that's what I want to do, um, because I've actually walked the path myself. How is all of this landing? I have a tendency to go on these like long tangent things and then it's one long sentence. But um, if you want to comment something, I'll, I'll be reading the chat. Let me know if, if um, yeah, if this is sparking any thoughts or any questions. Um, so if this wasn't fiery and passionate enough, I am going to underscore it one more time. Like I am urging you, I am asking for you to bring your call into life. And, you know, whatever the resistance is, just treat it as it is and continue overcoming, 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 doing the inner inner work that is required so that we can serve this world. And the bigger vision that I myself have benefited from anchoring into is um, the spirit of the work. So we all have our unique gifts and we have these talents and they are perfectly designed like you many of you know that I studied human design we've all been perfectly designed in our human costumes in order to carry out the purpose that we are here to do so you know I have everything that I need in order to 
play the role that I came here to play. And you have everything you need in order to play the role that you came here to play. And of course, there are some skills that we get to learn. Like I wasn't born good at speaking to people or selling services. Those are skills that we can learn. And those are part of the journey. Um, but we all have been designed for the mission, for the purpose that we're here. And then when we invoke the spirit, the energy of the work, of the quality of the service that we want to bring into the world, and we kind of combine it with who we are and what we have, that is going to be such a unique, such a beautiful offering that no one else can offer but you, because only you can bring that specific frequency or energy into the world. And that's why we need many of us. Like I used to have this tendency of people asking me, hey, I want to take a yoga class. And instead of me saying, oh, come to my class, I would say, oh, go to my teacher's class. And then one time someone, I really heard it when someone said, no, I want to come to your class. I don't want to go to your teacher's class. And I was like, yeah, right. Like, even though I think that my teacher is an amazing amazing teacher and it would be fantastic if this person experienced their class maybe they want to learn something from me because I carry something some specific thing and they need to hear it from me it wouldn't land if my teacher was saying it maybe the, you know the teacher doesn't speak to their heart and speak to their spirit so that's why one person cannot serve and kind of fulfill everyone's needs but we need the same truth or same energy or same uh, teaching echoed and yeah, echoed from different angles in order for it to reach further and wider. And like I said earlier, whatever the form of the service is that you want to offer, that doesn't really matter because it, it whatever is true to you, whether it's art, whether it's teaching, healing, space holding, tending, nurturing, guiding, coaching, mentoring, parenting, um, you know, all of that is service, whatever comes authentic is what is required. So I believe that connect, connecting to the spirit of your work, it gives a deeper meaning uh, to the work. It's, it's the vision that you can anchor yourself into. And it becomes almost like a devotional act. Because then I don't have to wake up in the morning and be like, okay, Mikala, push yourself to, you know, make the sale or push yourself to get motivated. But I know that I am, this is my, my worship, or this is my devotion to serving something bigger than myself too. And I don't know about you, but I need it. I need to feel that I am doing something bigger than just the mundane. I need to feel that there is a real purpose and real meaning to my existence here. So that's why I want to work with the, with the kind of spiritual aspect of this work as well. Um, and it becomes the big why like why do I do what I do and even if I never say it out loud I know it in my heart and that's that's the connection or that's the agreement that I have made and that's what makes it really really powerful because I believe that that can also be felt in the service it's it's a flavor in the person's existence in in all of what they do we can feel when it has spirit you know we can feel when food has been prepared with love, if we eat, you know, a bag of chips in a, in a, in a spiritless bag, it, it doesn't nourish us. But when we receive something that has been handmade and with love, it tastes so much more nourishing. And that's the truth about this work as well. When there is the spirit infused in everything, it, it's irresistible. It becomes so magnetic because there are layers and levels to this existence that are not only visible to the eye or only, you know, audible for the ear. There are layers and levels that we feel um, whether we are conscious of it or not. So I think this is such an important foundation for all of us who really, really want to serve. So I wanted to offer, <laughs> after my, my passionate speech, I wanted to offer a little moment of meditation because this is something that my teacher, Nisha Moodley, um, she's one of the beautiful leadership mentors that I've worked with over the years. Um, she talks about connecting to the spirit of the work. So I wanted to offer, of course, it's going to be my interpretation of, of the idea. 
um, but for you to experience what it might be when you get connected or when, when you feel the spirit and the energy of your work. Yeah. So um, if you're driving, if you're walking, you know, of course you need to do what you need to do. But if you're in a place where you're able to maybe sit down, maybe pause, maybe even close your eyes for a moment, this might be your, your time to do that. It's probably gonna be maybe seven minutes, eight minutes or so. So just get comfortable in your space. You can take a couple of deeper breaths, maybe letting your shoulders relax away from the ears. Let your face soften, your eyelids close, your jaw relax. And I found that the spine is such an important part of our confidence, part of us being able to translate spirit into matter. So wherever you are, even if you're walking or driving, take this uh, invitation to lengthen your spine. This is the backbone that we each get to kind of strengthen as we offer our service in the world. And just perceiving your spine long and the rest of your body nice and relaxed and easy. And just begin to visualize your own energy field first. So it's often said that our own personal energy field reaches about two meters, six or seven feet in each direction, also above you and below you. So just imagine this beautiful energy line that is, or energy, uh, field around you, almost like a bubble or an egg protecting you. You can give this energy field a color. You can give it some qualities. If you're a visual person, you might see the field of energy. And at this moment to make sure that your energy is nice and clear. You can firmly but kindly ask that any energies that did not originate with you, that are you, not yours to carry, will now return back to the point of origin, blessed and transmuted. So you're releasing, returning any energies that for whatever reason became a part of your energy field. You let them go blessed and transmuted. Now on the other hand, invite and call back your own energy that might have stayed with any other person, any other place, any energy that originates with you, call it back now, also transmuted and blessed. And just feel your own energy becoming more whole, more alive. You know that you're sitting here inside your own energy field. You can begin to call in the spirit of your work. And as best as you can, no expectation of what it should feel like or look like or what the result should be. And even if you've done a similar practice before, you don't have to expect the same thing to come. And it's also okay if nothing arises at this moment. Giving yourself patience. Opening up to receive the spirit of your work. Or maybe it's the spirit of your next project if you're the kind of person who has a lot going on. And if the spirit of your work chooses to show itself to you, can you let it sit 
right outside your own energy field so that you are still held within your own energy and you're meeting this spirit right outside your energy field. So instead of merging with the spirit of your energy, you get to observe it. And maybe you ask what it is that the spirit of your work would wish for you to know. Does it have a message? Does it want you to know something about it, about yourself, about your collaboration? And again, if you're not receiving anything, that's okay. Might be that it needs to come later. There is, so to speak, a better moment, right moment. It will take just for another maybe minute to sit here, be present with the spirit of your work getting to know one another, getting to exchange. Then you can thank the spirit of your work whatever way feels authentic to you and give it the permission to go or do whatever it needs to do in this moment. So you just release any attachment now to the spirit of your work. And I feel inspired to connect to one more aspect of ourselves and that aspect is the wise older version of you so now that you've gotten to know the spirit of your work begin to call in the wise older version of yourself again meeting them right up outside your own energy field And look at this wise older version of yourself, how healthy, how happy, how fulfilled they look like. And then ask for a message from this wise version of yourself. What is she or he or them wanting to tell you? What is the mission that you're here on that the wise older version of yourself already knows, already has been through? You have that information, that feeling, that energy, you can thank them. Release them and return back to your own space and this present moment right now. And still held, contained within your own energy field, notice how you feel. Notice what's in your current experience. Do you feel differently about your service, about your work, about your showing up in the world? Hmm. And we're slowly gonna return back so however you 
are able to slowly ground yourself back in and flutter the eyes open. If you have water, tea, something, you can take a little sip. And if anyone wants to share about your experience with the spirit of your work, I would love to. I would love to hear if you have something. How did it feel like? Did you see something? Did you get an experience? So, um, Kind of in addition to the spirit of our work, and I'm I'm still looking at the chat. If anyone's typing, keep typing. I want to hear from you. Um, but I I find this ikigai that is probably very familiar, or you're familiar with, um, the Japanese kind of method of of finding your purpose. Um, I find this to be a very useful tool. I I love how it combines all these different elements and aspects because you know, all these four pillars are equally important, I feel. Sana, thank you. The meditation was mind opening. Yeah, nice to hear. Um, so we get to start where, where we figure out what it is that we love to do and what we love to offer, what we love to be. And then what we are good at. So what we have, maybe some of the some of the skills that we already came with or the gifts that we came with, and then also maybe the skills that we are willing and excited to learn. Um, and then in our practical world, we need to also understand um, the aspect of, of how can we be compensated for it. Uh, most of us, we need to make our own money. Um, so this is one of the aspects. And then also the service part, what the world needs. Um, so this creates the kind of like a fulfilling combination of our purpose. Anu says the spirit was really intense and calling. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is because you're needed. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Yeah, sometimes they can be real, and especially also the older version can be kind of like, yeah, I don't know what you're, you know, <laughs> what you're doing. Like, go for it. So yeah. Um, and I trust that, like trust that over the mind saying, well, everyone's already offering this kind of course or, well, everyone's already doing astrology. Like trust the spirit. And then, you know, we might have to reinvent our thing every once in a while. We need to be creative in the way in which we offer it so that it is appealing to people so that we do get clients so that we do get paid for it so so that is the practical aspect of it but then we are kind of willing to do it when the spirit is there when we are really anchored into that um okay so un uncovering the genius what we're passionate about is not random. It is all a part of the divine plan. Even if it feels like, why am I passionate about this? What, you know, what's what's the use? Um, it is there for a reason. If you're passionate about 15 different things that don't even seem to come together, uh, you know, that is there for a reason as well. All of it is your unique combination, like your soup or your potion of, of your medicine that you're here to offer. And I believe that in order to invoke the universal forces, like Paulo Coelho beautifully put it in his alchemist book, that once you have made a decision, once you have the clear intention, the entire universe conspires on behalf of you achieving it. So we need to, I believe that if we come from a completely kind of self-centered place where we're like, I just want to build this, then at some point life is going to have to teach us can't only think about yourself so thing is going to crumble or something is going to happen there and that's a valuable lesson and it's okay if we need to learn it that way but many times when we have the intention when it really involves the service when we have kind of anchored ourselves into the spirit of our work that's when we can invoke the universal forces when we're not only there to just you know make the money when we're there to actually do something meaningful we get the support that 
is something we couldn't even plan for, something we can't, we couldn't even imagine because the universe's imagination is way vaster than our human imagination could ever be. So it's like we get to align ourselves, our intention around our own passion, our own genius and service. And that's when we invoke a lot of invisible support. Um, and I believe that also we, we have the skills that we need. We can learn different skills. And then also the more we step into the service, the more we begin to walk the path, new gifts almost like arise, like they come online, like they were offline for a long time. They just weren't there. It didn't seem like you were an intuitive person. It didn't seem like you were a person who was able to inspire others. And then suddenly, as you begin to walk that path, like these gifts, they come online and you're like, wait a minute. I can do something that I wasn't able to do before. And that all is real. And it's the kind of magical thing that begins to happen when we really um, uncompromising begin to walk our path of following our dream, following our, our mission and our service. Um, the most organic serv service will come as we tune into our genius. So what it is that we're really good at you know, if it's Excel sheets, then really, you know, make that your genius. How can you make your Excel sheets serve so many people that, you know, you could never have fathomed? And, um, you know, so it's, it's, it, we just take what we have, what we enjoy, what we're passionate about. Um, it gets to be easy also, this, this, Writing the word easy wasn't easy for me, it seems. But what, what comes easy to you, um, you know? Um, what do people come to you for? Um, do they always say, wow, I always feel so seen with you. Or I always want to come to you when I have something on my heart uh, that I need to speak about. Or, you know, do they come to you for, for some practical solutions? Like, there is really no hierarchy here. Everything is good. But then recognizing... What is it really that people want my service for? And then, you know, using that, working with that. Um, what do you enjoy doing? What lights you up? Like, clearly, this is very passionate to me. So then like, okay, how can I, how can I work with this? Uh, what lights you up in the same way? What makes, makes the fire inside of you burn? Um, all of these are part of your purpose. And it doesn't have to be about directly helping people. It doesn't have to be about setting up a one-on-one -on -one, you know practice or it doesn't have to be it can be through your art like it seems like you're doing your art in your own place but maybe someone sees your art piece somewhere and that speaks to them without you ever directly connecting with them so also we don't have to be so black and white about it it can be very broad the concept of of serving or it can be service through raising your children so well that everyone their life's touch will be in some way transformed. So, you know, there are so many different ways of service. So what is your sacred work, work in the world? And many times, like um, Anu was saying, the spirit was intense and very kind of calling or demanding. Many times the spirit, the sacred work is a little bigger than what we, I don't want to say have the balls for, but what we currently you know, feel courageous enough to deal with. Like it, the boots are a little bigger than what we are currently ready for. And that's exactly right. Like it's supposed to be a little terrifying. It's supposed to be a little like, whoa, okay. Like spirit is calling me to do this. And it's not that we need to, you know, do it right away. It's something that builds over time. But I think we, we need to be stretched a little bit beyond our comfort zone. And there is also saying that, we often fear what we desire. We often fear exactly what we desire. So whatever your fear is, public speaking, for example, maybe spirit is exactly going to ask you to overcome that fear and speak publicly. Many times they're very much paired. So whatever is your, your fear about your service, it's probably hiding a deep desire of, and I want to be in front of all those people, you know? Um. And you might know your service right away. You might not know it. You might feel like I knew it, but now it's changing. I'm not sure. You know, it's all okay. And it keeps evolving as we grow and as we evolve as human beings. Um, we start at certain points and then it kind of 
gets old and then we need to reinvent or we get to reinvent and we get, get to continue to be creative um, about it. So um, your sacred work, it has an expression. Um, it is its own spirit, like you could probably feel in the meditation. And then it is all also very much connected to you because I could never translate the spirit of your work in the way that it's meant to. But I don't want to also like say that you are your work because I believe that the work, it is something that is slightly outside of us and we can either choose to collaborate with it or we can choose to not. So, um, you know, like it, it is it is an extension or some sort of expression of who we are as people, but it has its own unique energy and frequency and what it is. And yeah, um, so so that's, yeah, there is, it's good to maintain some boundaries between us and the work uh, so that it doesn't get too enmeshed or too, you know, messy. Um, but when we do this collaboration between the spirit and ourselves, the spirit of our work, this is to me like the organic co-creation with life that we are really listening and we're really paying attention to what it is that life is asking of us. And then, and of course, life is also asking through our own unique desires and our passions. And then when we really listen carefully, it becomes the devotional practice we can really begin to work um, work and walk the path. So the resistance, whatever arises, we get to alchemize that. There will be inadequacy. There will be playing small. There will be, you know, all these fears, everything. And all of that is a part of the journey. So, um, and they also unlock these gifts. So like I said, many gifts will come online and many times they come online right after we have crossed like a big threshold. Like we felt like I am never gonna be able to grow into this version of myself. And we grow into that version anyway. And then we're like, whoa, like it's, we keep recreating ourselves, new versions unlocking all the time. And with the new version, also new gifts come and arise. And this is the path of kind of, it's it's a devotional path, like we're really committed to the work because we, we have to put ourselves, like all of ourselves into it. We can't really hold back because this work, it's, there is really no separation. I notice that if I have, um, you know, blockage in my personal relationships or with family member, that will be reflected in the business, in the work, because there is really no, like all the energy is connected. So in that way, we need to show up um, with all that we have. And I remember one time, one of my teachers said, she was like, when I'm doing my dishes, I know that is, I'm doing it for my business or for my sacred work. Because when your sink is clean and empty, you have more clarity of mind that will translate into you being able to serve in an even more powerful way. And it's almost like this self-leadership or like a like an athlete mindset that we get to have uh, when we wish to serve bigger. Like I was able to teach yoga classes and offer a little bit of something while you know, not taking good care of myself while having sloppy boundaries, while not really having the difficult clearing conversations that I knew I needed to have, while not feeling the emotions that I knew I needed to feel. Um, I was able to serve to a certain extent. And now that I wish to rise in my service, I need to start really showing up for the other work. And it's not even other work. It's the same work. I, I, get to really level up my self-care. I really get to be very intentional about how I use my time, my boundaries, you know, what kind of energy there is in my life, what kinds of conversations I have. So all of this, it, it is like a little bit of like athlete's lifestyle. I know that I need to eat well in order to serve well, you know? So that's, that's what begins to happen. Does anyone recognize any of this? I would love to hear from you how how it is landing so this is one of I think my last slides <laughs> um, so I can only speak from my experience and I love to actually call myself more a mentor than a coach because I haven't learned some coaching tools from someone 
you know, somewhere outside, but I mostly have experienced a lot of these things myself and studied them from my own experience. And therefore I can, you know, I can guide other people who are walking a similar path. So how my path has gone is first, I acknowledged the desire to serve, like really wanting to, wanting to do this work. Uh, get in touch with the spirit of the work or or the project or whatever it is. And then anchoring myself and trusting in that vision. And then as I begin to take steps towards materializing that energy, um, stuff begins to emerge. And this is the moment where we get to commit ourselves fully to whatever arises for you to alchemize. So kind of, yeah, process transmute whatever it is that arises um because like i said there is no separation between your service and your being in the world and then obstacles or challenges or whatever they begin to arise and they're not life telling you you shouldn't be doing this thing they are like testing you almost or asking so how committed are you how committed are you you know and there will come different kinds of obstacles at different levels of our service at different levels of business or entrepreneurship and they are the way like that's exactly the way it's not around them that we get to a point where we where we serve powerfully but it is by taking one at a time and in a humble way kind of like whoa okay I get to be stretched more here and more here and here and you know and and we all have a unique path of course because we have our own personal histories and our per personal karma and the stuff that we came here to experience and then also there are similarities or kind of universal themes that many of us get to um, you know grow through so typical challenges and these are mostly subconscious so they might not even be on the kind of forefront of our consciousness but more maybe operating somewhere you know down there um, sometimes the first challenge that we have is like not knowing what the purpose is or not believing in it. So these are the stories, who am I to do it? Whoops. Um, or many people already doing it, or I don't know what it is. Um, and this is the time when we probably are trying to force something from the mind and where we're invited to first just drop in to listen, to really get quiet with, with ourselves to, you know, yeah, just take the attitude of listening for a while. Um, and then what I shared in the beginning about the cup not being full, um, sometimes we can't really show up for our service because we have unmet needs for ourselves. Maybe we haven't done our own healing. Not that we have to be completely healed because I don't believe there is such thing. Like there is always more to uncover, but a cert certain amount of healing so that we are standing on our feet where we have this ability to regulate, where we have the ability to you know, know when, when it is that we need something for ourselves and then we know how to give it to ourselves, whether it's to another person, buying a service, asking for help, receiving help, whatever it is. Uh, but because pouring from an empty cup is really not, that's, that's the kind of old way anyway. So, so we get to learn to give what, what is the medicine that we want to give others? We get to learn it to give to ourselves first. Very much related is our inability to receive. So many of us, especially women, because of how being a woman has been in the past centuries or even, I don't know, longer than centuries, uh, we can be really chronically under receiving. So we we only think that we need this little and then we try to make this little last for a long time and serve a lot of people. And many times we need to first learn to receive for ourselves um, so that we know what it is to actually receive the work that or the service that we wish to give others. Um, because of past trauma, because of our, you know, bodies being unregulated, we can have a small window of tolerance. And this really shows up in, in service because we will, of course, meet different kinds of challenges or obstacles. And if we go into an instant overwhelm or we go into freeze mode or self-sabotage or some of these patterns, um, we, we kind of stay stuck in the same thing. We are, we're not able to grow in the service. So then we 
we uh, can learn to regulate. Of course, all of these can be healed. You know, there is nothing that couldn't be it couldn't be changed. Um, but this is something that I know for myself for like, I don't know, six or seven years, I was only able to handle this much. So life couldn't possibly give me more than that because I would go into like, ah, too much. I can't handle it. Bye. You know, go back to the old, not really growing. And then I'm thinking, why is it so hard? Why am I doing this? And um, the good news is that it's, it's, it's almost always something within ourselves that we can work on. And then, you know, usually it only takes becoming aware of the thing and being like, oh my God, I see this pattern that the pattern kind of begins to already lose its its tightest grip. So it's it's all good news. Like if if the you know, in a way, like if the if the thing is in us, that's always good. It's better that it's in us than in the external forces, because external forces we can't do anything about ourselves, we can do everything about. Um a very big one, fear of being seen. Uh, this has been mine um diluting your truth kind of trying to be a little bit for everyone I'm not gonna say exactly what I think or how I believe it is I'm just gonna say it so that my neighbor won't get offended and da, 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 da. um we can be in the hiding um and all of this is big work again for for many women uh but also men and for like especially for the kind of alternative uh, modalities that many of us offer uh, energy work or you know spiritual work that hasn't been proven by science or something like that there's a lot of lot of um like kind of attacking even towards those kinds of things so that can make us make ourselves smaller and hide our truth and whatever and I think now is the time like if the old ways would have been working they would have worked already like we wouldn't have these problems if medicine was able to uh, solve everything we wouldn't have the illness you know if whatever it is so we we need to broaden our vision and that is what we many of us carry we carry a different kind of vision a different kind of alternative way of thinking but then if we hide our truth we're again kind of holding back we're uh, hoarding our our um skills and our abilities and then we can't really help anyone and nothing is, is able to change so this is the courageous work of, of showing up and mu much of this work needs to be done on the level of the body so the body and the nervous system feel safe for all of this um and yeah this i already mentioned not taking good care of ourselves so it's the self-leadership kind of knowing how to lead yourself through the challenges um I used to spend weeks in freeze mode, like when something like I would announce a retreat or some sort of course and no one signs up, I go into freeze and then like three weeks, I can't even do anything. I can't even feel anything. And that's okay. Um, but also like these days I can go into freeze and I can be like, oh yeah, so I am frozen now. Interesting. This is what's happening. So what what, what do I do again? Okay. And then, you know, I have this ability to become aware faster, to nur nourish and nurture myself out of that state a little faster. So then I can keep going because it, it doesn't, my nervous system doesn't have to experience these things as a threat anymore because they are not a threat, but on the body level, they do feel like an actual really big threat. Um, but then we can always regulate and we can teach ourselves to not feel so afraid or not, not be so uh, dysregulated from these things that will and inevitably uh, come up. So the point I want to make here is that it takes a lot of inner growth in order to become a service provider that is able to, you know, feel fulfilled themselves, that is able to serve other people, that is able to financially um get compensated for it in an abundant way, who has a powerful impact, it takes a lot of work. It's not that Beyonce just became Beyonce because she just had something that none of us, none or no one else had. It's because she was willing to stretch herself and grow herself into it. And I sh just saw that she said she's still terrified uh, before releasing a new album, even 
though she's like the most famous artist in the world and she still gets terrified and it's not that the fear goes away it keeps coming but how we deal with it do we go into freeze for three months or for three hours you know and then we we have this ability to to stretch ourselves and to really grow into that position. And that's what I feel really passionate about because I see that there are so many powerful people who are not giving all that they can, like they're who are not living up to their full potential because there is the kind of, it's not necessarily even unwillingness to do the inner work, but just not knowing how to do it or like that it's even related to this. But there's so much invisible work that goes on behind all of all of the powerful work that people do in the world and many of like i i am a highly sensitive person like i'm someone who is very empathetic and able to feel a lot of other people's emotions and it's many times us who stay kind of holding back or who are like well i don't want to offend anyone or i don't want to you know there are those other people and they they go so i'm just gonna let them go and you know be successful and go and you know speak their truth but it's actually we need the message of the sensitive and the deeply feeling people and then we need to maybe pull up a little bit more of the courage to go because it might not be something that comes naturally to us for some of you it might for me it definitely didn't come naturally but then I just started kind of understanding how meaningful how important the message is that I have to say that I have to share and I cannot stay stuck with my own fears or my own like oh no it's going to be uncomfortable because it is going to be uncomfortable but it's also it's so needed it's so important to do that work so how I think the work is best done is through the regulation so we reg we learn to regulate our bodies our nervous systems to feel safe in bigger and bigger situations so that we can handle more so that we can hold more energetically you know we can hold a bigger community we can hold a bigger clientele we can hold bigger amounts of money we can hold bigger amounts of resources maybe we buy real estate you know we hold all of this like we're holding responsibility essentially um so we need to regulate ourselves bring ourselves into a place where that we can do without you know putting ourselves into an overwhelm um, we need to be able to learn to receive, kind of find the balance between um, giving and receiving, um, and then the courage and confidence really rise and kind of break through all of these stories and all of these fears that we have um, that are very human and that are just like perfect as they are, but also they don't have to stop us. So then moving through them. And then once we feel internally balanced, like we we have our cup overflowing, we are in a good place, we know that we can deal with stuff, uh, not perfectly, but we, you know, have this confidence and faith, um, we can begin to ask, how can I be of the greatest service to the whole? Like really using the well-being and the healing that we've done now to serve and help others, to be like, okay, not from a codependent place, like I need to be needed in order to feel loved. Like that's the old paradigm. That's something we get to heal in, in the you know process, but really actually feeling feeling fulfilled and feeling um, internally resourced in order to then uh, rise into this place of service from, yeah, this pure loving place without an agenda, like, okay, so if I give you this, I'm going to get this in return, but just this pure place of, of giving. Thank you, Tina. Yes, I know we're a little over time. So um, this is my last slide now for, for this presentation. I have something that I want to show you. So um, yeah, I wanted to offer this service webinar to um, give you an introduction to the work that I feel really inspired to do that I, this is like such a topic that I feel so passionate about because like I said I, I think we're all needed and we need to kind of not just wait for lifetimes to rise in the confidence but it's actually the work that needs to be done now if we wish to you know leave this world a better place or 
not see so much of the turmoil going on, or at least that we have something that we can, you know, meet the turbulence with. So when when we see all these outbreaks of violence and war and all of this stuff going on, at least we can know, well, I'm showing up for my work. I am showing up to teach people how to, you know, feel their emotions or feel their bodies or whatever. And even though it seems like on the grand scale of things like, well, what does it even matter if I have 10 people in my class or 10 people that I'm impacting on social media? But I, I believe that it's it's mostly for our inner knowing that I I gave my best, like I did my utmost. I overcame my own resistance and my fear so that I could serve in a powerful way. Um, I have created a program or like an online course that is called Resourced. So it is about internally resourcing ourselves as service providers. Um, so it's resourced, it's um, a seven week journey to the invisible work, this exact work that I've been talking about that is happening behind all successful soulful entrepreneurship. Um, so this is like, I was in a deep state of listening the past couple of months, I was like, what is it really that I can, I can put my gifts and my expertise and my experience and my knowledge and you know all of this how how can I put it to use like what what is the best way I can serve and um and this is something that came to me like I have so many yoga teachers so many energy healers so many service people in my field in my community and I see so many of you like in such like doing such important work and then also I hear a lot of people struggling with like you know I, I don't know how to show up I don't have the courage I don't have the confidence I don't know how to do like it feels gross to sell or it feels gross to, to make business out of it um and all of these are real challenges and also like I I want to I want for all of us to overcome them so that we can serve even bigger so the program, it kind of came as many of my things, they come as like download or like this knowing like jum, 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 like it's all kind of organizing itself in front of me. And when I started looking at the dates and I saw it's going to start on January 11th and then we're going to end on the 22nd of February from 111 to 222, I was like, okay. So <laughs> this is meant to be, and this is a more like a feminine way or this more, yeah, like internally resourced way to do the service externally. So we're not going to be talking so much about, okay, so what's going to be your business strategy? We're going to be focusing on the inner work, all this stuff that comes up as we start to walk the path. So um, first session, we're going to uh, call in the spirit of your work. We're going to call in your ancestor support. So all the thousands of ancestors, all the thousands of people that came and dreamed you alive, like came before you and dreamed you alive. And now you're a result of them. So how do you really make this lifetime and their, you know, their line also um, like put to use? And we're going to call in the support from the good, from the like, well, well ancestors. There are some who are not so, so well necessarily, but we're going to invoke the, the wise and well ancestors to be a part of our journey. And we're going to create an altar for the work. So it can be very simple. It could be just in nature, you know, a little area, but it's more like this uh, work of, um, and it's like working with the energy, the spirit of your work. So, so we're gonna have these spiritual aspects of of um of this work, yeah. And then we're gonna talk about the nervous system and the body regulation. We're gonna learn to receive or work on receiving. There will be one week off so that everything can kind of integrate and land. And then we're gonna talk about the rise, rising into courage and confidence. And then we're going to talk about how to be of the greatest service to the whole. And I'm going to bring the gene keys in a little bit. It's a map of your consciousness. What, what are the prime gifts that you came here with? So we're going to we're going to look at not all of them because it can get overwhelming. But we're going to look at some of them for you to kind of get an idea of, of what was the what was spirit thinking when when he or she or it's. Um, 
put you here with your gifts and with who you are. So a little bit of, of that kind of um, perspective. And then we're going to close on the 22nd resourced. Um, my intention is that you have at this point the inner resources, you have a crystal clear intention, you have some action steps that you can continue to take from this place onwards um, so that you can, you know, show up in the world in your service um, even more powerfully. Serving from an embodied, grounded and clear place. So that is my invitation to you. If you feel called, um, I made this course pricing wise, I believe, or to me, this seems quite accessible, uh, even though I believe this work could be, you know, I spent invested probably $10,000 in, in the past few years into doing the inner work because I realized I cannot, you know, go further in my service unless I really start working on my own inner stuff and resistance. So um, it's all been very, very, yeah, like something I, I believe is necessary to, to do. Um, and I, I don't even know if there is like, you know, I, I would pay that again for all of that. Um, but this course I priced at 555 US dollars right now or three payments of 185 or then after the new year, it's going to go up a little bit. And um, and then I have a bonus for you who are seeing this webinar very early on or live here with me right now, um, because if you sign up and pay full uh, over this weekend, so it's Thursday now, so by Sunday midnight, um, New York time, we can use New York time as, as the time zone. So um, you get a one-on-one -on -one session with me. So otherwise this is a group program, we'll meet on Zoom, we'll have a Telegram group where we can get or stay connected and I will give you some exercises and practices, but otherwise there is no one-on-one -on -one support here. But if you sign up over the weekend, then you'll get a one-on-one -on -one session as well. So then you can dive a little deeper on what it is that you are here to do. So. This is my my uh, invitation and offer to you. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I would love to hear from you or just however or whatever you your thoughts are. Um, I will link this is my website that I made for the for the course so you can also learn more information like all the modules are here uh, in more depth. so I'm gonna give you, Give you this you can sign up through the website also from these easy buttons so it's all made very very easy let me actually pop it into the chat so here we go oops um went to the wrong um yeah but um i would love to hear anyone still here there are some of you here live still yeah, is there anything you want to share before we before we close? All right. Well, I'm going to wait for a little bit if you have anything in the chat, but I'm going to close the recording. Um thank you so much for being here. Um I am looking forward to getting in touch with you. Let me know if any questions or any thoughts come up later on also. Thank you, thank you, thank you.